In this video, we look at applying knowledge of performance modeling, pipelining, and visualization to solve problems. We've already covered standard computational skills like abstraction and decomposition, but there are also several other computational methods mentioned in the specification that you need to be aware of for your exam. In the last video, we covered backtracking, data mining and heuristics. In this video, we're going to take a look at performance modelling, pipelining and visualisation. Performance modelling is the process of approximating how well models perform using mathematics. This method of solving problems is based around the use of simulations and mathematical approximations within those simulations without having to perform detailed testing, which may otherwise be prohibitive in terms of time and cost. As an example, a company could test a new high-tech cloud-based server farm at full capacity. The company may send millions of requests and max out its bandwidth, storage and processes to see how it performs under stress before it's opened up to customers. However, this manner of testing is expensive and very hard to replicate. Instead, the servers could be closely monitored while low level user transactions take place. Mathematical modelling can then be used to calculate how the servers would perform under more stress. This strategy is often used by developers of online massively multiplayer games. A popular online game may have hundreds of thousands of players trying to log in and use the system once it's gone live. Trying to test how the servers will handle this sort of traffic and load before release is tricky. Instead, once a game is nearing release, developers often open up the game as part of a free to play beta testing phase. The developers can limit the number of people connecting to the servers, say a few thousand at a time, monitor the situation, and then use performance modeling to calculate whether the servers can cope under greater strain going forwards. Pipelining means splitting a large task into manageable chunks and overlapping these smaller processes to speed up the overall process. For example, executing a program in the CPU, we could have one processor core fetching an instruction, while other cores are decoding and executing instructions. A good analogy for this is a factory with a robotic assembly line. We looked at pipelining in greater detail back in SLR1, structure and function of a processor. Finally, let's discuss visualization. So the way we visualize a problem can have a major impact on the journey to a workable solution. Visualizations allow us to create a mental image of what a program will do or how it will work before we start to solve it. As humans, we naturally respond well to visual representations of complex situations. You may have heard the phrase, a picture tells a thousand words. In a block of text, we can describe a landscape in minute detail. We can then visualize the scene being described. This is what happens when we read books. Of course, we could simply look at a photograph of the same scene and picture it instantly. Visualizing computer problems is no different. Here we see two representations of a binary tree. The table on the left shows how the binary tree can be represented as a two dimensional array. The image on the right is simply a diagrammatic version of the table. It is much easier to understand the structure of a binary tree from the visualization on the right. This is why we often use flow diagrams to illustrate the logic of an algorithm before turning them into pseudocode. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. What is performance modeling? What is pipelining? What is visualization? And how can you use these techniques to help solve problems? <laughs> 